Hello Math 8 students. Uh, this is a day of practice for solving inequalities. So I will not be going over every single um, inequality on this worksheet, just enough to make sure that you have the confidence so that you can do some of them on your own. Before we get started, let's review from our last lesson. In our last lesson, we learned that multiplying or dividing by a negative number is a reflection across zero on a number line. For example, when I have this inequality three is less than five, but then I multiply each of that each side of that inequality by a negative. We now have negative three and negative five that we're comparing, and we realize that negative three is actually greater than negative five. So we end up having to flip that inequality in order to make the inequality a true statement. Um, so we did a couple of those, and then we summarized by just saying when we multiply or divide by a negative when solving, it's a reflection over zero. That means everything, including the comparison symbol, like that inequality symbol, is also a reflection. In other words, it's flipped. This is not anything new. It's happened this whole time. It's just that up until now, we've only been using equations with equal signs. An equal sign reflected is still an equal sign. We're only seeing something new now because an inequality, when it's reflected, is a different inequality symbol. And so that's why it matters now, and it was something that we could disregard before. It was still happening, it was just something that we could disregard. So the key thing to know is when we are, when we are solving inequalities, we handle them in the same way that we do with equations. We can build flow maps, um, we would simplify one side first before we solved, we would do all of those things, we're just adding this extra step that if I multiply or divide by a negative at any point in that solving process, then I'm going to make sure that I remember to reflect or flip that inequality symbol. Just like you can see here in this example, x divided by negative 2 plus 4 is greater than 10, so our solving steps were we're going to undo the addition by subtraction, which we can see all of that here in our flow map. Um, then we would undo the dividing by a negative 2 by multiplying by a negative 2. At that point, since I'm multiplying by a negative, that re reminds me that I do need to flip that inequality. So we handle it the same way as we would an equation. That's enough of a review. Let's go ahead and get started. I have started us with a couple of easy ones here just one steps, just to make sure that we feel pretty confident about when we need to be uh, flipping that inequality symbol and how they're going to look when we graph those solutions. So to get started, 6x is greater than 54. Um, one of my pet peeves about this particular worksheet, um, since I just use worksheet generating software, is it puts this uh, number line right here in, in our workspace. Um, and so I usually rewrite that inequality so that I can do all of my solving steps right below that. So 6x is greater than 54. Um, x is being multiplied by 6, so just one single step, which means I'm going to undo that multiplication with division, just like I would if it were an equation. Now I'm dividing by 6. I'm not dividing by a negative, I'm dividing by a positive, so I don't need to worry about flipping that inequality. So 6x divided by 6 leaves me with x. I don't need to flip that inequality, it comes straight on down and 54 divided by 6 is equal to 9. So x is greater than 9. What is this going to look like on the number line? Well, it's greater than, so that means I'm going to use that open circle. Because um, it's not 9, it can't be equal to 9, so open circle to show it's not going to be 9, and now I need to figure out which side of that uh, open circle I need to shade on. So I can pick a number right here, that number 11. Compare that, is 11 in place of x, is that greater than 9? Yep, it is, so that means I am going to shade on that side of the number line. What would have happened if I would have picked something that wasn't a true statement? Well, let's see, 6. Is 6 greater than 9? Nope, 6 is not greater than 9, that's a false statement. That means when I plug in this part here, it gives me a lie, so I'm not going to shade on that side since that was an untrue statement. Uh, number two, another nice, simple, uh, one-step inequality. Uh, again, I need to rewrite that so I can show my work right below the original problem. Negative six is less than or equal to a divided by nine. A is a very unfortunate variable for this, um, so don't get confused between your a and your number nine. Let me rewrite that so that it looks like a very obvious a. We're going to change it to a capital there. We can see that a is being divided by 9. 
I'm going to undo that division by multiplying by 9. Whatever I do to one side, I do it to the other side. So notice this, I'm multiplying by 9 over here on the left hand side. 9 times negative 6 is negative 54. Sometimes students think, oh, I need to flip the inequality because it's a negative. Be careful, and I want you to remember. We flip the inequality, let me try that again. We flip that inequality when we multiply or divide by a negative. Not if we multiply or divide and there is a negative somewhere, but specifically if I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative. In this problem, I multiplied by a positive. So we don't need to worry about flipping that inequality. So that inequality comes straight on down as a less than or equal to. Um, that divided by 9 and multiplied by 9 ended up multiplying out, leaving me with the variable. So I have negative 54 is less than or equal to a. This time I find that negative 54 and since it could be equal, that's when I'm going to be using that solid circle. And again, which side of that line should I be shading on? Let's test some things out. Let's test out negative 52. That means in place of a, I'm going to substitute in the value negative 52. And I'm going to compare that. Is negative 54 smaller than negative 52? Yes, negative 54 is less than or equal to negative 52. That gave me a true statement. So I'm going to go ahead and shade on that side of the line. Now I've just happened to choose the correct side to shade on each time. That has not been intentional. Let's show one more time. What if we would have chosen this side? Let's test that one out. Negative 54 is less than, and instead of a, I'm going to substitute in that value that I've chosen. Is negative 54 smaller than negative 58? Nope, it's bigger. So that was an untrue statement. This side gave me an untrue statement, so I do not want to shade on that side. All right, I'm going to do just one more of these. Let's do uh, number three here. We have 70, again rewriting this so that we can do our work right below. 70 is greater than or equal to negative 7x. In this solving process, well, I can see that x was multiplied by a negative 7, so in the solving process I'm going to be dividing each side by a negative 7, and when I see this right here, this reminds me that I am dividing by a negative 7, so I need to flip that inequality. I need to do that reflection. I'm going to do that first before I forget. So what was greater than or equal to is reflected and is now less than or equal to. I didn't even finish doing this. I knew I was dividing by a negative 7. Whatever I do to one side, I still do to that other side. 70 divided by negative 7 is a negative 10. We've already flipped that inequality. Negative 7x divided by negative 7. That divides out, leaving me with just x. And now we have it. There is my solution. Let's graph it now. Again, it could be equal to. It says negative 10 is less than or equal to. So once again, I have... Um, a solid circle, we're filling that circle in, on the negative 10. Which side should we be shading? Let's test it out. Let's test out negative 6. Goodness, there we go. Let's test out negative 6. If I change x to a negative 6 and then write that comparison, is negative 10 less than or equal to negative 6? Once again, that is a true statement, so I will be shading on this side of the inequality symbol. I'm going to leave number four to you. Let's move on to number five. Remember, anything you do not complete is going to be homework. So as I skip through these problems, you can either pause the video and continue working on them on your own, or you can continue watching the video and then just save those for later. Number five, uh, 133 is greater than or equal to negative 7 times x minus 8 with that x minus 8 in parentheses. This is one where I probably want to stop and think about um, the order of operations here. How was this equation or this inequality built? What's happening to x? So I'm going to off to the side do a little flow map here. What's happening to x? x was first since this is in parentheses here. x was uh, subtracted. We subtracted 8 right in the very beginning. So, x minus 8 happened first. After we subtracted 8, we can see that those parentheses are then multiplied by a negative 7. So, 
in our flow map. After we subtract 8, then we multiply by a negative 7. Now we can figure out how we're going to undo those things. I'm going to undo multiplying by a negative 7 by dividing by a negative 7. And then I'm going to undo subtracting 8 by adding 8. And that will leave me with x all by itself. So following these steps, I'm going to begin by dividing each side by a negative 7. As I divide each side by a negative 7, since I'm dividing by a negative, that means I'm going to be flipping this inequality. What is greater than or equal to is now going to be less than or equal to. 133 divided by negative 7, negative 19, and we still have x minus 8 left over. So I've now divided each side by that negative 7. Now the only thing I have left to do is to add 8 to each side. Negative 19 plus 8 is equal to negative 11, which is less than or equal to x. So again, time to graph this. Going to go back up to the number line. Here's negative 11. It is equal to, so that means I'm going to use a solid filled in circle, a closed circle on the negative 11, which I've done in the wrong spot. Let me try that again. Negative 11. And again, I'm not sure which side of the line to shade on. I'm going to test out this side. Let's test out that negative 16. So in place of x, I'm going to have negative 16. And I'm asking the question, is negative 11 less than or equal to negative 16? And the answer there is no. Negative 16 is the smaller one. It's the one that's further to the left. So this is an incorrect statement here, which means I'm not going to shade on that side. That's where the incorrect answer was. So instead of shading on that side, I'm going to shade on the other side. I can do that without even having to test a point. It's a better idea to test a point. But just knowing that I got an incorrect statement on one side, that tells me I'm probably going to get that correct statement on the other side. Um, let's do number six, and then I'm going to leave a seven and eight for you to practice. Again, a flow map could be helpful here. This is not the way that our equations typically look. So when I'm looking at this and saying what's happening to P, I see that P was first divided by six. That's why it's stacked right over that six, because P was divided by six first, and then we added 8. Once we see how this inequality was built, now I know how to unbuild it. My first solving step is going to be subtracting 8. After that, then I can multiply each side by 6. Following those solving steps, just going to rewrite that right on down here. p divided by 6 plus 8 is greater than or equal to 10. Those solving steps tell me the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 8. Whatever I do to one side, we do it to the other side. That subtracts out and it leaves me with just 2. So I have now successfully done that. And I do have now p divided by 6 is greater than or equal to that 2. Final solving step, we just have to multiply each side by 6. I'm multiplying by a positive number here. Since I'm multiplying by a positive number, I don't need to flip. So that will multiply out, leaving me with just p. p is greater than 2 times 6 is 12. There's my answer. Let's graph it. P is greater than or equal to 12. Again, greater than or equal to means we're going to have a closed circle there. Which side of the line should I shade on? Let's try this one. Let's try that 8. And I'm out of space here, so I'm just going to rewrite it down here. 8 is greater than or equal to 12. Is that a true statement? No, it is definitely not bigger than 12. That's a false statement. So that means, again, if I plug something in on this side, it gives me a false statement. So I shouldn't shade on that side. Instead, I'm going to go to the other side here and shade on that side. Let's test it out just to be sure. Let's try that 14. That 14 is shaded. Is 14 greater than or equal to 12? Yeah, 14 is greater than or equal to 12. That is a true statement, which is why that side of that line is shaded. Again, I'm going to leave 7 and 8 to you. Uh, I'm even going to leave uh, 9 and 10 to you as well. I um, yeah, even 11 and 12. I think I'm going to do 10, actually. Yeah, let's do 10 together. Um, number 10, something interesting is happening here. You don't see it too often. You will see it sometimes. Um, this is one where you're building the flow map. You want to be careful about what's really happening. So this time I'm not going to build a flow map. I just want to be really careful with my, uh, with my arithmetic here. Let me rewrite this down below. 
3 minus 7n is less than negative 116. Um, I see this 3, and I know that this 3 needs to be zeroed out. Since it's positive, I'm going to zero it out by subtracting it. And whatever I do to one side, I do it to the other side. Okay, so 3 minus 3 zeroes out. Look at what we have over here on the left-hand side. I don't just have a 7n. You can see that that 7n has that negative. So as I'm simplifying, we need to make sure that we're careful. It's not just 7n, it's negative 7n, which is less than negative 116 minus 3 is negative 119. If you are building a flow map on something like this, um, it might look a little bit um, incorrect because we maybe don't notice that we're subtracting 7n. Um, so we want to make sure that we're careful about that. When we're subtracting the 7 and the n, what that really means is that we're multiplying by a negative 7, and that becomes clear here in our next solving step. I'm going to undo multiplying by a negative 7, by dividing by a negative 7. Whatever I do to one side, I do it to the other side. Key thing here, I'm dividing by a negative, so I now know that that means that that less than inequality is going to reflect or flip to a greater than inequality. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 divides out, leaving me with just n. And negative 119 divided by negative 7 is equal to 17. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so n is greater than 17. Greater than, that means it's going to be an open circle this time on the 17. It's not equal to, so it's not a closed circle. Which side should we shade in? Let's test a point. Let's test this 13. Is 13 greater than 17? Nope, that's a false statement. So again, this side here gives me false statements. So let's test out something over here. 19, is 19 greater than 17? Yep, that's a true statement. So this side gives me the true statements. That's the side that I want to shade on. Okay, again, leaving some of these ones for practice here. I want to skip ahead a little bit. You can see that they start getting a little bit more complicated. We have a few more steps. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Those are multiple steps going on here. What I want you to remember is, like I said in the beginning of this video, solving inequalities is a lot like solving equations. So think of this as an equation. If I think of this as an equation, I can view both sides. Negative 92, nothing going on there. I don't need to simplify. But if I look at the right-hand side, there's some stuff going on there. I can simplify or I can treat it as multiple steps and make a flow map. Same thing on the next problem. Nothing over here, just one single thing, so I don't need to simplify. But if I focus on this thing, I can see there are multiple things. V is in multiple places. We just need to simplify before we solve. So let's do these ones together. Number 13, I'm really truly, I'm just going to do a flow map on this one because x, our variable, is in only one spot, so I don't need to worry about combining x's. So I can just say what's happening to x and make a flow map. x is first multiplied by 7. Let me fix that. There we go. After we multiply by 7, we can see that that's in parentheses where I add the 3, that happened next, and then we multiplied the whole set of parentheses by 2. So that means my first thing is I'm going to undo multiplying by 2 by dividing by 2. I'm going to undo adding 3 by subtracting 3. And I'm going to undo multiplying by 7 by dividing by 7. So there's my flow map with my solving steps. So as I get ready, and I rewrite this down below, negative 92 is less than, let's try that again, less than 2 times 3 plus 7x. My first solving step is I'm going to divide each side by 2. Dividing by 2 undoes that multiplying the whole parentheses by 2, so I end up with negative 46 is less than 3 plus 7x. Again, notice what I did here. I just undid multiplying by 2 with dividing by 2, and since I divided by a positive number, I don't need to worry about flipping that inequality. Next solving step, it says to subtract 3. Whatever I do to one side, I do it to the other side, and now I have negative 43 minus 3 is negative 49, which is less than 7x. 
And the final solving step, which I'm running out of space to do, is divide each side by 7. Again, I'm dividing, but I'm dividing by a positive number. So that divides out. Negative 49 divided by 7. Again, I'm out of space, so just going to rewrite that over here. We end up with negative 7. It was less than x. There's our answer. We can find that on our number line, open circle, because it is not equal to negative 7 is less than x. And which side should we shade on? Again, let's maybe test out negative 10. Negative 7 is less than negative 10. Is negative 7 smaller than negative 10? Nope, that's a false statement. And since that's a false statement, I don't want to shade on that side. I want to shade on the other side where it's going to give me true statements. Okay, the next one, number 14, remember it's just simplify before we solve. So looking at that right hand side, I'm going to simplify as much as I can. Once it's all the way simplified, then I can worry about treating it like an inequality and solving it. But let's just simplify this part right here first. Uh, we can see <clears throat> we have negative 6 groups of 1 minus 6v. So that's the first thing I'm going to take care of. Negative 6 groups of 1 is negative 6. I have minus 6v right here, minus 6v being multiplied by a negative 6. So that's going to be a positive 36v. Took care of that distribution. And now I have that minus 4v there at the end. Now, one step done, I can combine like terms here. When I combine like terms, I have 36v minus 4v. That's going to leave me with 32v. Don't forget that negative 6 at the beginning. So I have negative 6 plus 32v. That now takes care of this whole right-hand side of that inequality. That is the same as that right there. So now I can just bring down this other part here, bringing it straight on down. I have negative 198 is less than or equal to negative 6 plus 32v. That's a nice, simple two-step inequality, real easy to solve. So how am I going to do that? I need to get rid of this negative 6. I need to zero that out. And I'm going to zero out a negative by having some positives. So positive 6. I'm going to add 6 to the other side as well. Remember that zeroes out. Negative 198 plus 6 is negative 192, which is less than or equal to 32v. One final solving step. And we divide each side by 32. Again, I'm dividing by a positive, so I will not be flipping or reflecting that inequality. And I have negative 192 divided by 32 is equal to a negative 6. So negative 6 is less than or equal to v. Let me erase some of this mess up here so that I can graph that. An open circle on the negative 6, no, a closed circle on the negative 6 because it could be equal to, so a closed circle this time. And which side should I shade in? Just pick a spot, pick any point on that number line and test it out. Let's test out negative 4. So instead of V, I'm going to be testing out negative 4. Is negative 6 smaller than negative 4? Is negative 6 less than negative 4? Yes, it is even more negative. It is smaller. I picked the right side of that line to shade on. So I am shading in this direction. Now again, you can see 15, 16, and 17, and 18 look kind of the same. The difference this time is we have multiple uh, variables on different sides of the inequality. So on number uh, 15, you can see, oops, number 15, you can see the left-hand side, 7 minus, excuse me, 4 minus 7, 9. We can't simplify that. Let's look at the right-hand side. 1 minus a n. Can't simplify that. So that means, since I can't simplify either side, what I'm going to do instead is start moving those variables around so that I only have n in one place on one side instead of both sides. Now, again, there are multiple ways that you can do this. But here's my advice. Avoid the negatives. We always make more mistakes, or we tend to make more mistakes when we have negatives anyway, especially when we are now using inequalities and we have an extra step of flipping the inequality symbol when we are dealing with negatives. 
So if I am looking at which way I want to do this, I can get rid of these negative 7n by adding 7n. When I do that, I'm still going to have a negative n here. Instead, I can choose to get rid of this negative an by adding an. That's going to zero that out on the right hand side. And when I add an over here, I'm not going to deal with negatives anymore. So that's the direction I'm going to go. So that adds uh, zeros out. And here on the left hand side, I have 4 minus 7n plus 8n is plus 1n, which is greater than or equal to 1. Continue on with this solving process, and I'm going to subtract 4 from each side. That leaves me with one single n, which is greater than or equal to 1 minus 4 is negative 3. n is alone. I know it says 1n, but we're lazy, just like I would say I have a dog instead of I have one dog. It's okay to just think of that as n. You could divide each side by 1, but dividing each side by 1 is not going to have any change. And so that is the solution to our inequality. n is greater than or equal to negative 3. That's going to be a closed circle. Which side of the line do we shade on? Let's test out a point. Let's test out 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3? Is 0 bigger than negative 3? Yeah, that's a true statement. So that means I will be shading on that line, side of the line. Okay, uh, I am going to skip number 16, let you guys work on that one on your own. Just remember, here's your hints. Left hand side, there's stuff that we can simplify. Simplify first. Once it's simplified, you're going to still see that we have n over here and n over here, so we're going to have to move some of those n's around, zero them out on one side, so that we only have it in one place. Let's do one that's a little bit harder though. Let's do number 17 together, and I will leave 16 and 18 for you to work on. Rewriting this, I have three groups of negative 5x minus 6, which is greater than 24 minus 8x. When I'm looking at this, I can see that this side, the left-hand side, does need to be simplified because I have grouping symbols, so I definitely need to simplify that. I can see the right-hand side does not need to be simplified. We cannot combine like terms there, and x is not in, um, in more than one spot, so we're going to focus just simplifying that left-hand side. So I'm going to use that distributive property. Three groups of negative 5x is negative 15x, and three groups of negative 6 is negative 18. All of, oops, wrong button. All of that is greater than 24 minus 8x. So this is similar to number 16. In number 16, you're going to take one step, and then it's going to look something kind of like this, where now I have an x on this side, an x on the other side, and so I want to try and combine those x's. Again, let's make a choice. Which way do you want to move those x's? Do you want to deal with negatives still, or do you want to try and zero out those negatives completely? I want to zero out the negatives completely. So negative 15x will zero out if I add 15x. To the other side, I will also add 15x. This zeroes out, and it leaves me with, again, be careful, not just 18, but it leaves me with negative 18, which is greater than 24, and negative 8x plus 15x leaves me with 7x. So now, this is a nice, simple two-step inequality like we did early in the video. And I can see x is being multiplied by 7, and then we add 24. So I'm going to zero out that 24 by subtracting 24. And do the same thing over here to the other side. Negative 18 minus 24 is equal to a negative 42, which is greater than 7x. And one final solving step, I'm going to divide each side by 7 leaving me with x. Negative 42 divided by 7 is negative 6, so I have negative 6 is greater than x. Finding negative 6, open circle, which side of that line should I shade on? Let's just pick a test point. Um, I'm going to pick negative 8. So instead of x, I'm going to write negative 8. Is negative 6 greater than negative 8? Yeah, negative 6 is bigger, it's further to the right. So that is a true statement, which means I will be shading on this side to show where all of the other true statements are going to be. So again, 
anything that you have not finished is homework, um, but that is enough practice together. Uh, practice the other ones on your own, and the answer key is in Canvas, so you can always check Canvas to see how you did. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.